Hi, I'm Al Dayer with Mickey's Bait and Tackle in Syracuse, New York, uh, a 50-year tradition. My brothers and I uh, run that place, and uh, we have a fly fishing department. And uh, in that department, we teach people how to tie flies on a routine basis, and we're always having customers come in and ask us what flies they should be using uh, uh, when they're out fly fishing for trout typically. And one that's, uh, that's come to my attention that's been uh, one of my favorites is called The Usual. And it's an interesting name because when you're knocking the daylights out of the fish and somebody happens to see you and they yell to you what you're using and you yell back The Usual, well you can imagine the reaction that you get. But I can't take credit for this fly. This is a fly that was uh, pioneered and developed by Francis Betters from the Os Sable Sports Shop. It's an Adirondack pattern. And I think one day a gentleman named Bill Phillips came in and put a rabbit's foot on his desk and said, Fran, make me a fly from this. And this happens to be a snowshoe rabbit's foot. So it's a simple pattern. It's made entirely from the snowshoe rabbit's foot. And we'll talk about why a snowshoe rabbit's foot has such unusual qualities as to be able to entice fish under many situations, under many conditions. And, and we'll get into the theory of it as I'm tying it. But uh, this usual pattern uh, can be tied from uh, the dyed uh, variety of snowshoe rabbit that's available to us today. Uh, prior to that, you could only use the natural, which is the original. And the original was also tied with a red thread. But um, you'll see how this is done. It's, a, it's actually a Comparadun fly, and I believe it was Francis Betters that was given credit for doing the original Comparadun patterns. So let's, let's get ready to tie one of these here. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is we'll take this fly out and we'll put a hook in the vise. And the hook that I'm using is a typical dry fly hook. So it's medium to light wire. Uh, in this case, it's an Eagle Claw uh, Nickel Teflon style number 50. It's about a size 10. And the usual, I find, you can tie them anywhere from a size 8, which is rather large for a dry fly, all the way down to probably a size 18. So the average size of the usual is about a 14. The hook is in the vise, and then I'll take my thread, and in, in this case we're using the traditional red. I'm going to tie uh, the traditional colors we're using the natural rabbit's foot. Get my thread established. And I'll cover the shank of that hook with my red thread. Here's a fishing fly for you, let me tell you, because again, it's so simple, but yet so effective. The interesting thing about uh, the rabbit's foot is you can break it down into a two component parts. You've got the guard hairs, which constitute the pad, and then underneath the guard hairs, there's a distinct grayish, uh, softer fur, which we use for the dubbing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a substantial amount of guard hairs from the, uh, the rabbit, You'll see what I mean here. You get a rather large pinch, okay? And I'm going to remove the underfur. And it's the underfur that makes the dubbing for the body. So all I want right now is a big clump of guard hairs to construct both the wing and the tail of this pattern and save the underfur for the dubbing. So there's a rather large clump and I'm going to dissect that with the, pit, with the tip of my uh, scissors into two separate parts one part being larger than the other okay the smaller part we'll use for constructing the tail of this pattern which I'll put in with the pinch method okay there's the tail. Okay. And the next part I'm going to use to construct the wing. And isn't as in comparadun fashion, what we'll do is we'll tie that wing in reverse with the butt section facing towards the rear of the hook. Like so. 
Again, pinch. Get your wing established. Okay, wrap thread over the the butt section all the way again to the tail. Okay, so here you have it. You've got your tail. Okay, and you've got your wing, which will be propped up, and there'll be dubbing placed in front of that. Again, like a comparadon. So now we take the dubbing, which was from the under fur. In fact, I may need, I may need a little more, so I'm going to go in there with my scissors where I took that original patch and cut out some more of the, un the finer under fur and pull that out and use that for my dubbing. Okay. Now I use a good wax and I dub the old-fashioned way where you get your fingers sticky with the wax. Okay. Instead of putting the wax directly on the thread. It took me a few years to figure that one out. And I get my dubbing and my finger and I wrap it so that it goes clockwise or counterclockwise, one way or the other. Okay. There we go. There. Let's see how this works. And then I begin to form my body. The thing about rabbit's foot is that if you look at it under a microscope, it's extremely translucent, very glossy, and it has extremely, uh, how they say, trilobal light refracting qualities associated with it. So by the very nature of it, the fact that it is the underfoot, the pad of the snowshoe rabbit, makes it also extremely water repellent. I need a little more dubbing for the front of that fly, so I have to go There's still some on my table here. Okay. When you dress this fly with any good quality floatant, it's unsinkable. It's like a cork. And the really cool thing about this pattern is that it catches most of its fish on the swing. When you swing it into the current downstream from you, it goes beneath the surface ever so slightly and takes on the quality of an emerging mayfly. Most comparadons, I think, are really designed to uh, imitate the mayfly dun, which is the adult. But again, when this fly is on the swing and it's actually drawn underneath the, uh, the surface of the water, it uh, may uh, imitate an emerging insect. As an, as an emerging mayfly. And there's our characteristic red head. Okay. It's really rather crude looking, but extremely effective. This fly occupies probably at least 25% of the real estate in my dry fly box. And uh, I, a lot of times the, my, my fishing buddies will, will see me out there throwing dry flies and they'll know just what I'm using without even asking. Because the usual catches fish. There we go. There you have it. Very simple but effective. The usual. A Francis Betters pattern. An Adirondack pattern that has its use all over the world. I've given this fly to people from Japan and I when I when I go out west I take it with me and give it to some of the anglers out there. I think more recently it's become popular. Hey, thanks for being with me so that I could share this pattern with you. And remember, don't just tie it in the one color. You can tie olives by using an olive-colored body and also a uh, dun-colored wing. Uh, experiment with this one. Tie some March Brown versions of this fly. Uh, again, don't just uh, fish it dry. Fish it wet as well. It's a very versatile pattern. So all it really needs is a little drop of head cement. And we're done. We're ready to go fishing. So again, thanks a lot for Mickey's Bait and Tackle. And this is the usual.